Hello, so this demonstration is for friends who need help and need a step-by-step -step guidance for uh, this today's assignment. So I'm writing my title is Crayon Techniques. This is what you're supposed to be doing during your do now. You have your name and class too. Then I go ahead and divide my paper into five sections, five equal parts. You can do that however you want. One, two, three, four. I'm going to number each one. One, two, three. And I'm leaving space in each column or each section to experiment with my crayons. Then my second page, I divided it into five more sections, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, so I'm ready to get started. I prepared my sketchbook. Technique number one is value. So I'm going to write value, the lightness and darkness of a color. So this is my light value, my medium, and my dark value. You can pick any crown you want, and you're just going to press very lightly to create a light value. I want a nice solid color in my box. Very, very lightly. It's like you're tickling your pencil onto the paper. Very light. My dark value, I'm pressing harder, hard pressure to make the dark value of green. So you're only using one crayon for this technique. And the medium value, I'm using medium pressure. So not as heavy, not as light, not like a feather, but right in the middle. I don't want to go as dark as my dark value, but I'm going right in the middle. Okay, so now I have three different values of this green. You could have used any crayon for this. So I'm done. I'm moving on to technique number two. is called layer. So I'm going to pick two colors that are in the same color family. Orange, red, and yellow are my warm colors. And my cool colors, so this is warm. Cool colors are blue, green, and purple. purple, and green. So I'm going to pick colors in the same color family. So I can do purple and blue, that, or that. So these are just my choices to layer. OK, so I'm going to choose green, one layer of green, and then I'm going to throw some blue on top of that to make blue green. So you're just making the illusion. You're using your crayons to give this swatch the illusion of blue-green. Okay, if you want to do another one, you can layer purple and put some blue on it to make blue-violet. Whatever colors you choose to layer just have to be in the same color family. Number three is technique. I'm looking at slide number four now. Using a color scheme. Color scheme. So I'm choosing a set of cohesive colors. I can choose colors from the same color family. I can do complementary. Complementary colors are right across from each other on the color wheel. So um, purple and yellow are complementary color families. Or sorry, yeah, complementary colors. Green and red, like Christmas colors, are complementary. Orange and blue are complementary. A basic color wheel has six colors, so that's what I'm sticking with. Six colors on your color wheel to experiment with your crayons. So again, we could do cool colors or warm colors to um, experiment with different color screen schemes. Okay. 
So I'm almost done with my first page. I did value, layering, and different color schemes. Number four, slide number four is contrast, add contrast. So I'm going to do what I did in the first section a little bit. I'm going to pull from that. And I'm going to do a very light, I'm going to draw a, very, a circle very lightly, any shape, any color. And then in order to make contrast, I'm going to use hard pressure to make an outline around that shape. I can try that again with a different shape. If I make a triangle and I shade in my triangle very lightly, I can outline it to make it stand out. So contrast makes, um, we use this technique to make things stand out in your picture. So you can use crayons in all these different ways. Let's see, square. So I just surround whatever shape with a very dark outline to make it stand out, right? So you have a light value in the middle and a dark value for the outline. Technique number five is variety. So in order to add variety, you kind of do this, but instead you can, you pick complementary colors to outline. So instead of the same color, you're outlining your shape with a complementary color. So if I draw this random organic shape blob, I can outline it with a complementary color to add variety in my picture. So I know that green complements, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna choose a green outline to add variety. Okay. Um, blue and orange, right? Those are complementary colors. So you can draw an orange star. If you're picking out an outfit and you have an orange shirt, blue would look really nice with that because blue is directly across from each other on the color wheel. Blue lives across the street from orange on the color wheel, so we know that they are complementary colors. So if I'm outlining my orange shape with blue, it adds variety. So you can use complementary colors to add variety. For number six, I'm on my next page. I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm on number six. Technique number six is add texture. Texture is how something feels, right? So rough is an example of texture. Um, soft. So I'm going to label a section texture. Press hard to create dark texture lines. So same thing. You can take a one color and you can draw a little square right very very light pressure so i have this nice light value of blue and then i'm going to draw experiment with different lines straight curved zigzag so i'm going to use a zigzag line to give this area some texture so you're just basically drawing coloring a section of your paper you're trying out a color for the background, and then you're experimenting with lines to give it texture. See what different patterns you can make with your lines. If I want to make a rough brick wall, I want it to look like it has a rough texture. My background's going to be this soft red, and then I can go ahead and use my lines and patterns to give it this brick wall effect that I want. So texture is how something feels, right? Or how it looks like it feels. So this looks bumpy. This looks rough, rough. Um, okay. Number seven, blend. So blending, we're gonna make a gradient here. Lay down a section of color and use medium pressure. Choose another color lay down another section of color next to that first. Use medium pressure to blend between the two sections. 
So an example of that is this. I blended the two colors together. So I'm going to do that same thing on my paper. I have this nice, what is this color? Red violet. So it's red mixed with purple. And I know it's going to blend well with purple because it has that name in the color. Look at the color labels on your crayons. This is blue violet. This is red violet. So I know once I start to create that gradient and the colors blend into each other, I'm getting the effect that I want. So I'm using medium pressure, especially in areas where I want it to look Wherever the colors transition together, that's the area that you're looking for to get that blending effect. And I know that blue is also next to purple on the color wheel, so that should blend well, and that looks really cool. So I just blended together analogous colors, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. I'm going to look at a different color scheme. So I have red, orange, and yellow. I'm going to try to blend these up together now. So I'm using my medium pressure. I'm just starting anywhere in this section number seven. And I want to go and as I start a new color, I'm just dragging that color into the previous one to get that blended effect. And here I might get a little hint of orange because red and yellow make orange okay so that's blending number eight technique number eight is create texture rubbings so this can also be called a grave rubbing i have actual bumpy things here right these three pads have texture on them so if I want to create some waves, I'm going to slide this texture palette under. At home, you can put your paper on top of a rough, bumpy surface like tiles or, um, I don't know, anything else that has texture on it like this. So I can then take my crayon and put a piece. The texture of the object will show up on the paper. So as I'm coloring very lightly, the texture of the object that I place under my paper shows up. So this is what a texture rubbing is. Technique number nine, what's next? Hatching and cross hatching, my favorite. So hatching and cross hatching, you're just taking a series of lines going in one direction. So I have these parallel lines, right? And then in order to shade an area in, I'm going to draw kind of like a checkerboard pattern or plaid lines in the opposite direction. So I have vertical parallel lines. I layered that with some horizontal parallel lines. So I use short parallel lines that are close together to create shadows. Cross hatching is when you use hatching first, then add perpendicular lines to create a darker shadow. So this can help you um, with shading um, just using lines. So rather than leaving your crayon on the paper to make shading, you can pick it up and create shading with lines. And the closer together your lines, the darker the shade. If your lines are more spread apart, the lighter the shade. So light pressure, spread apart lines, that's less shadow. Okay, and finally we have number 10 is pointillism or stippling. It's just um, drawing dots like this. So again, just like hatching and cross hatching, the closer together your marks, the darker the value or the area you're trying to shade. 
the more spread apart and small your line, your dots and lines are, the lighter the value, okay? You can try that out with your crayon. You can do, you can layer it up. So if you do a light box of purple here, you can go ahead and make some dark dots or pointillistic lines. Use this technique um, to add interest to large areas like grass or the sky, or you can even use it on top of another color to add more dimension. Okay, 